Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science Through Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about why mobile Linux died. So let's dive right into it. Now, first, why did we had a need for this sort of operating system, which is open and free? Well, uh, reality is nothing is free in this world. That's something that we all have to learn. And what does it mean? It simply means anytime you're using a free app, for example, Instagram, uh, you are the one that's being sold. Let that be very clear. When you are using Google Map, it's not that Google Map is free. Google Map is selling you or to be, uh, to be fair, it's understanding how to sell uh, products to you much better, understanding your behavior patterns and then selling this data to whoever is interested. So that creates a very real world scenario where we privacy is a long gone concept, meaning nobody gives a damn about it simply because it's just lost battle at this point in time. And it's truth. It's true flat out whether you like it or not. It's just like, nope. That's gone. That's like, don't even think about it. It's like a gone system. And government is the biggest issue here. Government always wants to make their citizens into mindless drone. Now, one thing you have to understand, it's true for every government. It's the nature of government itself combined with human psychology. Inherently, this will be the outcome. It does not matter whether it's China or Sri Lanka or India or USA or Pakistan, whatever have you. It's inherent nature of uh, power itself. So you cannot blame, oh, government wants to do this. Like, yeah, that's the whole point of government. That's why you have to keep, uh, you know, uh, removing them, keep cycling them. So one does not become too, too de destructive, too damaging. So that's the reality of it like nature of power demands that you make uh, everybody under you uh, into a mind dose. that's the only way you can feel safe so that's a very vicious cycle and you have to understand smartphone is not something that you can live uh, without it because yeah there are many people who say oh i live without smartphone but here's the deal uh, if you're born today then it's impossible that's the whole point of it. Yeah, so people who are born before it, they have a neurological architecture where they can survive it. People who ha uh, like, you know, grew up with it, you can't because we are social creature. We have to do things that everybody else is doing. That's the whole point of humanity. That's the whole point of a society. Uh, now, again, some things good are also there. Some things bad are also there, but we have to deal with it. And not to mention in modern life, I'm not just talking like, oh, I have to feel included. Uh, there are a lot of uh, communication benefit of it, be it text to communication, be it uh, messaging communications, be it profit also. For example, there are many people making money out of it. I am going everywhere using my uh, UPI for payment. So all those sort of things are here. It's real. You cannot live without it so fundamentally speaking we do need something that uh, applies some breaks to it now what about uh, apple and google well this duopoly that we have at this point in time there are two sides of the same coin both of them are same and uh, both will collect boatload of user data of course they will say you know we are not collecting not this not that no both of them will do that inherently otherwise the products they are selling is a bit too cheap so that's the whole point point. and what about google google is a giant you cannot live without it flat out you will not be able to navigate heck uh, majority of food delivery services all of the apis are freaking google api so that's the reality of it fundamentally you cannot live without it think of it this way it's a verb now it's like what we say we say google it you know you can google it or you can do this that's the whole point of it it's so big you cannot live without it even if you have an apple you have to use google services so reality is without it you cannot live and that's why i kind of like apple, uh, google products simply because if i have to give my data i would rather have number of people who are accessing to my data much fewer compared to like you know giving my data to google and my data to Apple. So that's not that interesting. And then why the heck Apple sells? Well, Apple is a very great way of showing mine's bigger than yours. Uh, it's a very good status symbol because it has the true status symbol. For example, let's say Rolex or things of that nature, Mercedes or Ferrari, they are actually high status symbol and they are very expensive. So most people can't afford that, but they can afford Apple. So they are like, you know, I'm richer than you. So that's the whole point. Mine's bigger than yours. His status symbol is there. So, and many people are so intrinsically messed up into it, including children, that they have to have it. Like um, one of the photographer has a YouTube channel. He specifically talked about it. It's like if he switched from uh, Apple to Samsung, even though Samsung was giving better photographic quality, his daughter will kill him. <laughs> that's, that's the reality of it. It's like, oh, blue text mark. Like that's the whole point, status symbol. And that's why another thing as far we are humans, we are fallible creatures and we do things that are collectively uh, cool so to say so that's why apple is still selling and they sell our data to government now this is one thing you have to understand because of the all the high fo focuses on american media many times people forget that yeah there are certain rules and regulation to protect american citizens from american companies but that there's no such thing exist anywhere on the planet be it germany be it india be it sri lanka be it china when these companies go to china china is like bro all the data I don't care all the data to me. Apple is like, yes, sir, your data. Here's the data. Here's your 100 GBS fiber link. 
So that's the reality of it. So if Indian go government tomorrow wants like, I want mobile data, it's like, sir, where? Where do you want? Do you want hard drive? Do you want optical fiber link? What do you want? So that's the reality of it. Yes, in USA, there are like, you know, there is a reason why it's called land of the free. And even those rules and regulations are like under fire and people are trying to destroy it. So that's the whole point. And the moment government touches this data, government will end your freedom. And it, that's if you are lucky or to be fair, if you are very unlucky, because if you are lucky, they might just send you up. So this, this is a very real world scenario. Uh, everybody was using the app because they wanted to have zero COVID lockdown policy. Now, problem with that is how would you control it? How would you manage it? You use your mobile phone to track everything. How is it? Uh, you, China is about to go poof. And I mean poof, as in like the 2008 market crisis will look like uh, that was some teenager throwing temper tantrum. If China goes boom, it's like really bad boom, like you, 100 trillion dollar kind of bad boom like really freaking bad boom and the trigger like the first event is almost started so china was like no no we cannot have this so barring just doing that which they are trying to do be mindful that these are the places where they are sending tanks and there would be one bad day where some tank will be fired so they are doing that but how do you control it like that's what you want you want to control them you want them be mindless drone do not care whether you lost 100 percent of your life saving die in silence so what did government did using their mobile phone they just uh, red code all of them all of them simply got record here's the covid does not spread that quickly like even if this person here has covid it's not gonna poof here that's not gonna happen all of them randomly just noticed like hey all of their codes became red and they were like blocked from traveling it was a way to make sure uh, crowd is dispersed and all that then that did not work they were like okay brute force muscle so that's the whole point that's why access to our mobile phone in the hands of government not good. Not good. That's why this duopoly is just not good enough. So did anybody actually try to make a Linux phone which is like truly open source and all that jazz? Well, yes, there were some serious attempts because you have to say recent data scares as in like data scares started to happen after 2015. Uh, like, you know, shook a lot of people meaning the amount of data that was like that was scary to people. We were not thinking like, oh, it will notice something here. No, no, it knows who you are, how you are, how you're going to behave before you do. That's the whole fear aspect of if you have a device 24 into 7 on top of you and then people are like, I want smartwatch also. I'm like, might as well give your soul to them. So the, the amount of data that was scary. And what uh, scared even more is that the fact that data is not secure, meaning the people who have nothing to do with that data that can control it. That's why like Trump election was such a big deal. It's like every company sold the fact that uh, Hillary win win without even like, you know, who cares about what public things? Everybody, every smear campaign, every Google, heck, like there is a, a method of madness where every publication house they will print both articles like if this wins or if that wins this is the first time they did not do it the first time they did not even had what if trump won like they did not even entertain because all the companies all the mobile phone companies apple samsung everybody was like okay what government wants okay government wants this and that everybody that's why trump winning was such a big deal such a shock to the system it's like no people can be free of government people can be free of internet people can be free of like people are just like showing you snippets rather than the whole 40 minutes of it so that's the whole fear aspect that happened recently. And entrepreneurs looking at this opportunity, this void in the market, they jumped in and started companies like Pinephone, Fairphone, Librem5, and few other, like Cosmo Communicator, other companies also. Now, here's the, each of them are focusing on core aspects like privacy and different price points. For example, Fairphone is like, you know, fair. That's the whole point of it. It's fair to everybody in the supply chain. Not just like, oh, oh I'm exploiting children and to make fun from everybody from bottom up. And that's why I find it so hilarious. People are like, you know, uh, uh, twins uh, using their iPhones is like I think about the children I'm like stop using iPhone like I'm telling you like iPhone is so bad in India there is a factory iPhone factory and a Samsung factory people working in Samsung factory actually get paid very little but they get paid Apple no and then Apple is like oh we do not knew the subcontractor was not uh, like you know paying them it's like that's why your prices were so low you cannot be that dumb so that's the whole point. People are like, we want environment. Like, no, no, no. You just want to show that you're bigger than the others. Accept it. Accept it that that's how shallow you are. So these, all these companies, they were focusing on different things. Like uh, Fairphone, Fairness. Uh, Librem Phone, uh, they went all in. They were like, dude, if the motherboard is there, if the uh, driver is there, if the chip is there, all the source code for it, meaning the driver that makes it work, tick, has to be open source. And if it cannot be open source for some communication proprietary reason, if they could not find it, they made it into a module, meaning you can yeet it out. If you ever have a doubt that it has a backdoor, yeet it out. Don't even think about it, just yeet it out. Uh, again, all these companies like Pinefall was like, okay, let's make Linux into a real thing. So these were some serious attempts with some serious uh, money put into the situation.
so why it all failed like this that's a serious number of companies then what the hell all failed well uh mobile operating system that just works meaning where you can make a phone call where you can just take a photo where you can just play a media uh, it takes a lot of money meaning it is true uh, apple and google they are making a lot of money but they are spending serious amount of money into making their operating system work meaning i can open my phone take a feature it works that takes a lot of money now open source supposed to be a counter for that and it is a actual real world counter there because that's why you find always linux used in servers rather than microsoft why because microsoft could employ let's say 20000 employees to work on a piece of software open source could have like 50000 or 80000 or even millions of people working on it uh, because if let's say one piece of code or kernel is used in hundreds of server all those server administration will work on it it's like hey let's look at it let's double check it let's triple check it if there is a bug community will take care of it and it has happened it has worked that's why linux is used every Heck, even NASA uses it, so it does work. But it does require a critical aspect. Open source itself is not a magic bullet unless you have people using it. For example, let's say uh, some dude made a uh, you know software. For example, Stream Deck kind of software. There is one individual I was in talk with. Uh, he made a very good software piece of software, and I asked him to make it open source. Let's say he makes it open source. Let's say people start using it. But here's the: what if no developers use it? no developer actually looks into the source code and fixes a bug or uh, makes it better or uh, patches up any uh, security vulnerability then what uh, all of us are using open source but it's not safe so that's the whole point it's what we classify as abandoned ware at that point in time so open source does not magically solve this problem you have to have people in it to use it and the number of people are uh, in the whole ecosystem is very little very little. and you are assuming everybody in the system is like someone who can actually work on a kernel level so and many other companies all these companies almost all of them they do not have developer access of system on chip meaning the soc that goes in there the snapdragon again to be fair snapdragon itself does not have uh, like qualcomm does not have deep level access that access lies to uh, arms holding that's why arms holding is the license holder of arm architecture so they are the only one that can go really deep like like transistor level deep that's their access then you have qualcomm then you qualcomm sells their packages and again they cannot uh, you, you cannot just do hulu hulu to their packages like it's a complete package you just buy it shut up uh, so they do not have that uh, you know core level access what does that mean that simply means the same hardware that can easily run full hd video if you are running a uh, unoptimized piece of code it will have hard time running a uh, you know full hd video same mobile hardware just you just change the operating system google was completely fine tuned it worked amazingly well same horsepower uh, same horsepower in linux system because the driver is not well uh, tuned to soc level it just barely works barely it will be able to play 720p video so that's the actual reality of it like that's why many time even on paper they will say oh linux is so smooth the moment you start to do things like take camera you know like camera phones are like it's lagging why the heck is lagging the whole pipeline is not that smooth and community keep forking and this is the worst thing about linux and that's why linux always failed in desktop environment and mobile environment is that any time there is a problem they are like how about we just fork it i'm like you gonna staff to say if we could doing that like that's fundamentally painful with linux like i had a issue with linux i tried to use a linux next to me and uh, the i had a problem and i tried to the first answer was like why are you using this distribution the moment somebody uses that is that's the end of the linux that's the end of linux. that's why like as when steam deck was made they were like dude we are using this uh, steam os i don't give a damn about anything else and that's the only way you can make it work so all this community forking let's say there was 35000 people who are using pine for let's say in that 35000 at least 500 people can actually do things to your lin operating system they are not just user they can actually do things to the system now you fork it they are flat uh, flat out uh, you know selling the fact that we have five distributions i'm like that's why it will not work that's why like half of the system uh, yeah we phone app does not work oh yeah camera app is super slow oh yeah media playback does not work because again you divided your workforce into that many segment it's literally why apple phones uh, are so smooth because they have only few hardware and samsung phone while even having much larger developer team much higher oomph of technology they still could not do it because they have like even if they have higher uh, people they have 20000 models so that forking flat out kills it rather than brute forcing perfection into one os they are just like what if this what if that what if that what if this what if that is like yeah all of them are garbage that's the reality of it and app support is zero zero is just like the app support in this is so bad it will make app support for microsoft uh, windows mobile phone look better and there are very weird brutal limits uh, so let's not even go there and camera quality let's not talk about that that's that's the one thing the moment you op open the camera and you're like nope you will just no pit out of there just flat out if you are any individual who wants to use camera all of the ca mobile phones if they are using uh, because many manufacturers are giving you android or linux system if you are choosing linux you will use the camera and you like nope 
you will nope it out of there flat out that's how garbage it is that's why it failed so can we expect any revival well uh, the first thing you have to understand the revival can only happen if oem jumps into it anyone other than oem level it will not work it has to be the oem itself so driver and kernel level support has to be done from the core level meaning the people who are building the motherboard the people who are like okay this is why the clock cycle does this this is why the, we have this sort of power draw like you will always find people saying there's a lot of phantom draw in linux system yeah it's design working as a laptop it thinks mobile as a laptop but um, Android was designed for mobile system, so inherently has a lot of uh, smoothification where it's like I get it I'm a mobile so the, It has to come from core that sort of support and there has to be a way of making profit For example Linux in server industry. It is making profit like actual profit. Like wait a minute. Isn't it free? Well Code package is free. It's just service support on it is not free You have to pay for it and any large company using uh, you know multi-million dollar of equipment multi-billion dollar of software IPs they will be like dude I can easily pay a few hundred thousand dollars on like you know service support staff 24 into 7 actual technicians working on it They can support it and that's how Linux community survives on the server and there are like a lot of people paying for paid services or paid tech support And they're actually working on it and that's why we have such a successful ecosystem in the server world in desktop Nobody wants to pay for it. So it dies and mobile phone same thing nobody wants to pay for it it dies so how can it be done well you can sell it like a service meaning this operating system has to become like buy a three-year package uh, buy a two-year package something like that or it has to have huge funds for development meaning like how linux kernel cores are developed it's like there is a like large foundation foundation linux foundation that is taking care of it something like that has to be like linux mobile foundation and boatload of money i'm talking at least few uh, billion dollar kind of money that's how much money apple and google pour into making their operating system so huge funds are there now is there any company who have incentive and horsepower needed to do that well yes samsung now, why is that? Well, simply because Samsung wants to go into RISC-V. Now, RISC-V is an open instruction set architecture, like how there is only two majority architecture in this world. That is x86 created and owned by Intel and licensed only to AMD. You have ARMS holding created and owned by ARMS, but it's sold to whoever is willing to pay, be it Qualcomm, be it Samsung, be it Apple. Now, both are closed source, meaning you cannot do YOLO to it. You cannot just like look at it, figure it out. If there is a bug, it's there in all the hardware. That's like you have heard of Spectre Meltdown and the hardware level falls simply because that's why nobody can tear it. The hardware is locked. But RISC-V is an alternate to that. And big companies with some deep pockets are pouring their money into it, supporting it. And this is becoming, brick by brick, it's becoming important. And uh, right now, uh, 5G modems that uh, Samsung is trying to develop for the next generation, they are using RISC-V. So they have to give less money to ARM holdings. And uh, Samsung also makes their own SOC, Exynos. Now, if RISC-V is expanded to this upper limit, Samsung will be a company that can design, meaning RISC-V, ISA level, like not a single patent they have to pay from ISA level to uh, SOC level to motherboard level to actual phone level they can do everything in-house without even giving a single dime outside so they have the horsepower to actually make a linux phone from bottom up and be like let's make sure this puppy works they have whole pipeline they don't know oh we actually can't deal with arms holdings or we cannot have like there are a lot of optimization that goes behind the scene even though you oh we have the kernel and there is a lot of like you know subtle elbow grease that goes into it to make sure it's smooth so they can do that now is there an incentive for them actually yes that will allow them the freedom from Google. And if they can make sure this phones are sold as a, like a premium device, uh, like, you know, some sort of holding and with like, you know, this has full desktop and actually has the desktop like kind of horsepower. And they're like, bro, this is not for poor people. This is for like, who will pay for it? Government agency. The moment you say government agency, hey, this phone cannot be tried by government. Government is like, shut up and take my money. They like the idea of, uh, you know, spying on everyone. Don't like to be spied upon. So. There are a lot of actual incentive. If uh, somebody in Google is like seriously um, thinking about this, they will consider Linux to be a genuine threat, specifically risk pipe. And uh, Samsung is like, if they're serious, again, this will take time, five, six years. But it will, long term, they will be like, dude, if Google says, oh, we're going to charge extra or like do this and that's like, bye. Samsung and Dubai rather than what happened to Qualcomm. Ah, Qualcomm, so have I. So that's why there is some actual potential that Samsung can look into it. But likelihood is low, but Let's see. Without these sort of thing, there will not be any revival. So do not hope for it. Yeah, privacy is long gone. So this was my presentation on why Linux failed in uh, mobile operating system and why it died. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst a friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.